In this video, we'll go over the thought processes involved in starting a design project, specifically a residential design project. All projects start with a program. A program is a statement of client needs and wants. It should contain a description of the project, the rooms or spaces needed, and their adjacencies. Adjacencies means what is next to what, physically or visually. The program should be informed by the project objectives, meaning what do you want to accomplish. These are project objectives done by a designer for a cop's grocery store, and the overall goal is to help cops succeed as a business. The goal is to design a fresh and simple space with an emphasis on store brand identity and logo recognition. The goal is to get people to shop longer and buy more things to create a value-motivated visual identity, use color and form to enhance visual wayfinding, and enliven the shopping experience. So you need to have the objectives or the goals of your project in mind when you start. Then you can do a concept sketch. A concept sketch sums up the core design of a project. In a well-designed building, you should be able to look at its features and see how they pull together to show the concept. Now, this is a napkin sketch. It's called that because designers will often collaborate with other designers and the client and sketch on a restaurant napkin. Here, the client wanted to incorporate principles of feng shui into the project, so the designer thought, how about making some aquarium cubicle walls? The conceptual stage of a project is where you explore ideas and see which ones that you want to run with. It's not the time to be assessing if the designs are practical. First you want to see what the client likes and then you develop it. This was done by a designer as a concept for bus stops in Seattle. It rains a lot there, so she thought umbrella covers might be a great concept for a bus stop. This is a bubble diagram. A bubble diagram is circles with the spaces or functions inside and their adjacencies shown. Here we're looking at visuals of how people interact with their electronics. The next few slides I'm going to show you were done by an architect who designs high-end homes in Florida. This is his thought process. He starts out with the property because the property features will inform the design. Where is the view? Obviously, you want the important spaces facing the view. Where are breezes coming from? Where do you need privacy, either visual or audio, from neighbors? Where is the traffic approach? All of this should be considered before you start designing the actual spaces. Here are bubble diagrams for some of the spaces. Set up symbols that you want to indicate adjacencies or sight lines. Show which spaces get the views, which spaces need privacy from other spaces or maybe sound privacy from other houses. Here the bedroom gets the view, the family room gets the view. The family room needs to be next to the kitchen, which needs to be next to the living room. 
more bubble diagrams for other spaces. He wants a nice traffic flow from dining room to living room. And then here, he's putting it all together. So you can see what spaces need to be next to what, which ones get the views, and their relative sizes. The relative sizes is important because next you'll want to do a refined bubble diagram. And you need to find out what is going to be in each space, how big it is, and how much room you need to move around it to competently figure out how big that space needs to be. In other words, you don't arbitrarily say your family room will be 10 feet by 10 feet. You need to know what will go in the family room, how big it is, and how much room you need to move around it. This is where templates come in very handy. If you have furniture templates, trace the pieces of furniture into the room in approximate locations where you want them and leave clearances, that is space between them and space to move around. And that will give you an idea of how big your rooms need to be. This is a fit drawing. A fit drawing is a floor plan that shows how people and furniture will fit in it. All of this is called entourage. Entourage is people, decor, furniture, accessories that give visual scale to a space. This shows better than any written dimension how things will fit. This particular plan was done for a client who loves to entertain. So the architect showed her how all the people she planned to invite at one time would fit and how they would interact around her furniture. Entourage is useful for when you are designing, not just for the final presentation. Here, we can see at a glance the size of that fireplace based on the size of the scale figures. When you're designing and drafting elevation views, which are height views of walls, put a scale figure in there and that will tell you if, for example, the height of your ceiling is appropriate, if the height of your windows is appropriate, just one scale figure will help so much when you're designing. Also helpful are 3D sketches as they give you an idea of scale and proportion far more than looking at flat orthographic drawings of elevations and plans. If you can't draw in 3D, there is 3D grid paper available, both isometric and perspective, and the SketchUp software program is also great to use alongside manual drafting. Design is an iterative process. You do not draw a floor plan once and then that's your final submission. Typically you'll draw one and you need to always draw to scale either on graph paper or on tracing paper and keep your pencil in one hand and your scale in the other. Sketches should never be not to scale. So you sketch a plan, then you look at it, and maybe you don't like part of it, so you overlay some tracing paper on it, and you sketch it again, and then you overlay more, sketch it again, until you get the result that you like. While you're sketching, you should keep clearances in mind. Clearances are the distances things need to be from other things. This is from your textbook. Clearances need to be incorporated at the outset because they're very difficult to incorporate 
after you've already sketched a floor plan through several iterations. Here are some more clearances, and these are all in the textbook. These are clearances for a bathroom. I want to point out a few things. One, when you draw a traditional tub, the straight end needs to be against the wall because that's where the drain is. The tub should always be in a corner. However, don't draw it this way over here and then put the drain over here because that doesn't make sense. Note the clearances. For example, you need 16 inches between the center of the toilet and the edge of a countertop sink. When you can, arrange all your fixtures along one wall because anytime you have a fixture against a wall, that wall needs to be a chase wall, also called a wet wall or plumbing wall and it needs to be a minimum of six inches wide. It can be up to 18 inches wide, depending on how many fixtures you have on the wall and if they're wall or floor mounted. Now, I want you to notice that there are walls around the shower, and here we have structure around the basin, when you draw with a template, when you draw that shape, you are only drawing the basin. You need to draw the structure around it, and that goes for a shower. Usually with a shower, you draw a square, or in this case, a hexagon, with an X going through it and a circle in the middle. So a shower symbol has a drain and then these lines indicate that the floor is sloping, but you don't just draw these lines. You need to draw these lines too because again, they are the structure. Now, if the shower is in the corner, you can incorporate the walls as the shower walls, but you need to draw something along the rest of it. Looking at this shower again, this is the drain, which is that circle in the middle, and then you would have lines coming from each corner indicating that the floor slopes. Speaking of templates, here for example is the shower and you would draw in the drain, the lines, and the structure around it. And here's the bathtub, same thing. And your picture would look like this. You trace this, you trace this, and then you draw in this. You also have considerations for furniture. Furniture has this edge which you need to move up closer and touch the edges of the body of the piece of furniture. And you only draw one line, not a double line. So furniture needs to look like this when you use a template to draw it just one line and move it up to touch the body of the furniture. Incorporate good design practices. And finally, you'll have your design layout that shows how big everything is and where everything is and where the doors and windows are and traffic flow. So now you need to draft it. Here are suggested steps from going to this to final drafted floor plan. First draw the outline, the length and the width. Then cut out the exact shape and make sure that you add a double line right away for the wall thickness. Constantly check corners to make sure they're square. Just slide a triangle into them and if the walls align with the triangle, your corners are square, that is, the walls are perpendicular. 
Mark and measure the interior rooms. Cut out the doors and windows. Add fireplaces and stairs. Add line weights, that is, make the object lines, that is, the walls and all the features, dark. Add appliances and fixtures. Add floor poche, and notice how they are ragged looking. Don't enclose poche in a square and make it look like a piece of furniture. Make it look like it's fading out on all ends. And then add the furniture. So you can look at this drawing in the text and use it to inform what your own final submission should look like. This is an example of a past student project that's very well done. Here's the floor plan, elevation symbol. The, the elevation symbol is telling us go to drawing two on sheet one to see the elevation. And then here it is, drawing two on sheet one. That's an ID label. So that way the floor plan is keyed to the elevation drawing. Notice the stairs. The treads on exterior stairs need to be 12 inches wide. And all drawings need their own ID label. Then you put a title block at the bottom. You can see this example on page 72 in the book. And on page 114, are the pictures of the bathroom clearances and we have a page here on bathroom sizes. So that is how you get started on a residential design project.